Let's look at another optimization problem. At what point in the first quadrant on the parabola y equal 4 minus x squared does the tangent line together with the coordinate axes determine a triangle of minimum area? Okay, when you think about this, a picture is nice. The picture won't help you solve the problem, but it will provide the proper intuition. So if you think of this quadratic function here, and you think of the tangent line as being the hypotenuse of this triangle, you see that the x and the y-intercepts actually will give you the base and the height of the triangle. So what's going to happen is that eventually we will define uh, our function to be the area of the triangle, which will have formula 1 half alpha, my, alpha times beta. But we have to see how this configures with the actual curve y equal 4 minus x squared. So we know what we need, but we have to do a little work before that to, to arrive at a, a formula that will allow us to solve the problem. So what we're going to do is, again, write our x-intercept as alpha and our y-intercept as beta. And clearly, the tangent line can be given by the derivative here, uh, the slope of the tangent line, that is, and that'll be a negative 2x. And so if we look at the point of tangency, which we just call x, y, and then of course y has the uh, formula 4 minus x squared, we can look at the x-intercept with the corresponding zero coordinate, and we can look at the y-intercept with the corresponding zero coordinate. And then we can actually just compute slopes. So if we take the slope that's defined by these two lines, or these two points, we have 4 minus x squared minus beta, which we have here, and x minus 0, which we have here, and that equals negative 2x. We can do the same for these points. We'll have 4 minus x squared minus 0 divided by x minus alpha, and that will also be equal to negative 2x. Now, if you will, to find beta and alpha, we can simply cross-multiply. So we cross-multiply here by x and get a negative 2x, and then we can easily solve for beta. Beta will be uh, 4 plus x squared. Now, likewise, if we cross-multiply here, we're going to get a negative 2x squared plus an alpha times a 2x. Now, notice with this particular problem, we'll simply transpose this term and divide by 2x. And when we do that, we get a formula for alpha, which is 4 plus x squared divided by 2x. Now we have all of the ingredients that we need for this formula here. And you can see that there will be an issue at zero. I'll say a little bit more about that as we work through this problem. Now, when we substitute for alpha and beta, we simply write alpha here and beta here. And then we just do a little bit of algebra. These two terms are like. So the area function will be 1 quarter times the quantity 4 plus x squared, quantity squared, divided by x. Now, if you look over here, the x-intercept here is 2. And so our triangle is in the first quadrant when we consider the set from 0 to 2 exclusive of the endpoints. Now when we think about that, we can see as x approaches 2, we get a well-defined area. But as x approaches 0 uh, from the right, this becomes infinite because the tangent line is approaching a horizontal line. The tangent line here at this uh, uh, x-intercept is, is well-defined. So there's no problem with that. So what we're looking here, we're thinking, okay, there must be an interior point here that will minimize the area of the triangle. This will not involve EBT because we don't have the endpoints here. So we don't have to worry about checking endpoints. So what we're going to do is uh, look towards uh, Fermat to look for a local uh, minimum that's an interior point. So that means that we need to look for uh, critical numbers, which means taking the derivative. So of course here we'll just apply the quotient rule. We'll have the uh, one-fourth factored, and we'll take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator here divided by the denominator squared. Very simple calculation. And of course the 4 plus x squared is common in each term, so we can factor that. 
And then of course, what's left behind is a 4x squared minus 4 minus x squared, which reduces to 3x squared minus 4. And of course, to make this a little bit easier to factor, we'll factor the 3 from both of these terms uh, to get this term. And now, of course, this is a difference of two squares, and you're thinking, jackpot, we're, we're at the good part. So this will just become what? x minus 2 over root 3 times x plus 2 over root 3. I often do this type of factoring, so it's very easy to see uh, uh, critical numbers. Now, of course, what we see here is that this term is always positive, and these two terms can actually be zero. Of course, when x is equal to negative 2 over root 3, and of course, when x is equal to 2 over root 3. But as I've written here with the red arrow, uh, we'll discard this particular critical number. Not that it's unimportant, but it's not germane to the problem we're doing because this is not in the first quadrant. So we're thinking this is the, the magic point, so to speak. So what we can do now is just basically apply the first derivative test. Now we can do this symbolically, no need to look at decimals or anything like that. The only two sign changes would occur here. And so when we look at our domain of definition and we actually plot the critical number 2 over root 3, if we take a point here to the left, that just means that this particular factor here will be negative. All the rest will be positive. So we get a negative derivative or a decreasing function. And of course, if we take a test point here, this now is positive, everything else is positive, so we get an increasing function, and therefore, decrease, increase, relative minimum. So this would mean that at this particular point in the domain, the area function is actually a relative minimum. Now the problem doesn't ask us to find the actual minimal area, but it does ask us to find the actual point of tangency here where it occurs. We have the uh, x value, which is 2 over root 3, and then we can just substitute that in here to find y, and you'll easily see that that's 8 thirds. And so now, as we look up here, it says at what point? Here's our point. At this point, the tangent line together with the coordinate axes will create a triangle of minimal area, and we are done.